So we have talked about gravity in our previous session. Now we are going to talk about the magnetic survey. So I'm going to share my screen now. So magnetic surveys, uh, we will start again with uh, the same thing. We'll have a physics review. So there is a magnetic variation with latitude. That's the thing that you need to understand because it's a, a key thing in the magnetic. And one thing that you also need to know is basically your magnetic field direction. So every magnetic field has three dimensional direction. You have your declination, which is your horizontal, and you've got your inclination, which is your vertical. And the declination is important for navigation. So both declination and inclination is always renewed um, every single five years. So this is the one in 2015. And I've just known that there's actually a new release of the declination and inclination of 2020. So it's going to be like that 2015, 2020, 2025, etc. And then you need also to understand uh, the inclination because that's the key. Because apparently inclination and latitude that they have kind of um, kind of a connection between them. Um, not really a connection. It's like a relation basically. So for example, there's a buried magnetic body. For example, in an inclination of 60. So for example, in here here that 60 is here not this 60 right but this 60 um and then your signature would be something like that so that's what we already uh, discussed in the physics class as well that the same magnetic body in three different location will have three different signals so if it is at the north pole it will have positive signal if it is at the equator it will have negative signal and especially at these two areas, it will be exactly over or almost exactly over the body itself. But if you are uh, in the middle of it, um, you're going to have a signal that is a bit slanted. So the, you know, the peak is not exactly on top of it and the trough is not exactly on top of it. So if you're doing a survey, for example, in Indonesia, it will be different if you're doing a survey, for example, in Europe or something like that. So this is the second quiz. Also, I'm going to give it in uh, one piece of paper so you can uh, work on it. So you're sailing from England to America. Imagine that you're sailing without a GPS. Uh, now you're measuring a magnetic inclination of 35 degrees. So you need to draw a sketch and illustrate what the measurement means. And then the second question would be a yes or no question. And you need to, know, uh, you need to deliver why. And then are you at, on the most direct path to reach America from England? And you need to use the map in the next slide. So the first hint to answer this is just to go back to this. So if you understand what declination and inclination is, you should understand how to draw 35 degrees inclination in a, in, a, in a sketch. And then the second one would be, are you on the most direct path to reach America? So I gave you a magnetic inclination map. So you need to understand how to read this map, where is 35 degree inclination and compare it with the track if you're going from England to America, okay? you should be able to answer that question. Now we're talking about the instrument. I think Marine Magnetic Survey is, um, survey-wise, it's a lot more um, simple than gravity survey because there's not as many corrections as you need to have. The only correction that you need is the inclination and declination, and it's published every single five years and you can have it freely. So the magnetometer looks like this. I think it's quite familiar for you. And you've got the winch and it is going to be towed at the distance of at least three times of the length of the vessel. So if the length of the vessel is, for example, 100 meters, you need to tow it around like 300 meters at the back. And um, that's it. And the application is going to be for buried objects, especially buried magnetic objects. So the first one here is just pipelines that are buried. So you can actually see where the pipeline is easier than if you're doing SBP, because if you're doing SBP, you need to have slower, you know, slower, uh, slower speed. 
and then I don't know. I think SPP is a bit more expensive than magnetometer, if not not mistaken. And also, you can do it quite quickly if you're doing it with magnetic. Also, if you're doing uh, surveys in America or near anywhere in Europe, basically, there will be a lot of UXOs or unexploded ordnance. So I, uh, I just learned about this UXO thing when I talked to my friend who is working um, in a survey company in the UK. So um, I don't know if you already know about this, but I'm just going to tell it anyway. So the, the history is when uh, they were going through wars, whether it is um, World War One or World War Two. they created a lot of ex explodable items or explodable ordnance. And when the war was over, uh, the thing that came to their mind firstly was to just throw them to the water and then it got buried sometimes and sometimes it's not. So it is very important to do surveys for UXOs up there. And it's quite a common survey, even like um, my friend told me that they're doing a survey with a lot of magnetometers behind them. So they tow like three to five magnetometers at once. So you're making like multiple, you know, multiple arrays in one go. Um, and it's quite an important thing to do. And afterwards, after the geophysicists um, give you the information of the UXOs, it's here, here and here, they will give it to the Navy, I think, and then the Navy will, um, sometimes they will recover them, sometimes they will just see if it's um, dangerous or not. So basically it's not, you know, it's not their responsibility. They just need to give them the exact coordinates of where these things are. Quite cool. <laughs> and the one that is less familiar to you is actually the application at mid oceanic ridges. Uh, normally, this is done by the um, scientists rather than people in the industry. So I think Hanif has given you an introduction about this. So there's a hypothesis by Vine Matthews Morley about seafloor spreading. So if you imagine that uh, we're going at the mid oceanic ridge four million years ago, it will actually record, so the, the rock records uh, the memory of the magnetic polarity at that time. So apparently the magnetic pole is not always pointing to the north. Sometimes it's pointing to the south and something like that. So it's quite unique, right? So what these rocks um, actually remember is the ambient magnetization while it was created because uh, they were actually created uh, as a very, very magnetic type of rock, a basalt. So the magnetic polarity, there are two of them. So the first one is the normal magnetic polarity and the second one is the reversed one. So you can see the, the normal polarity is the black stripes and the reversed one is the white stripes. And from these stripes, we can actually, um, we can actually calculate how many, you know, how old, the seafloor is. So that's uh, the scientist's work. But basically, if you're doing a survey on, you know, over the ridges, that's what you're going to look at. And if you imagine that you're on a boat with the toad graphometer, um, sorry, the toad magnetometer, this is what it looks like. So even though the seabed only looks like that, only looks like, you know, um, a ridge or it looks like a chain of mountains, the signature is going to be very, very rough. It's like up and down, up and down. That's actually your positive and negative um, magnetic polarity or normal or um, reverse. So for example, this one is the normal one that is called Gauss normal. And there is a very low one in here. So low, high, low, high, but in general, it is called the Matuyama reverse. And then you've got the Bruns normal. So that's basically the idea of uh, having a magnetic survey over the ridges. Uh, finally, magnetic models, because you already know the, um, the gravity model. The most important one was going to be the inclination, declination, and other magnetic elements in World Magnetic Model 2020, or WMM. As I told you before, it's renewed every five years, and you can have it in here. Um, the other one is the general magnetic anomaly for early guidance. So it's not for um, any interpretation purposes, but it's good, it's useful to delineate um, which part is oceanic, which part is continental. 
and it's actually worse resolution than gravity. So you really, really need to go to the field if you want to have good magnetic data. It's two minute resolution, so it's like two miles. And it looks like this. So you can already see, as I told you before, if it looks like stripes, then it's oceanic crust. But if it looks like this, it might be continental crust. So we can actually delineate the oceanic crust from continental crust by looking at the magnetic signatures. And finally, before we go into seismic and why we actually need both of these things, we need to see the gravity and magnetic, and we sometimes need to see um, it with um, seismic. We need to know in which type of structure will gravity and magnetic surveys will be more useful. So you can imagine that if you stack different densities, but it's only stacked like a cake, the gravity and magnetic signal would be just, it's going to be flat because it doesn't sense any density contrast or magnetic contrast. While if it's going to be something like that, it's vertically arranged like something like dikes, dikes is just like the lava that is seeping through the cracks basically, you can have the signals recorded something like that. So when you are looking at faults, when you are looking at dikes, any other vertical components, you can use gravity and magnetic survey. But if you wanna see the layers, then you will need seismic survey. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the next um, lecture. I think that's it. Yep, that's the star. <laughs> you can use gravity and mag uh, magnetic, especially in this kind of structure, if you want to see this type of structure. And that's it from me. I will see you in the next class. Bye.